They are very depressing years like before it. You know, it, you were, there was no back door. So Blackrock on the north lot those I, I was following them since forty three. And in that time we'd been knocked out, knocked out nearly uh, and the whole year was gone in one game, you know. And then uh, I always remember and I, I got it checked up there lately. In nineteen forty five they were playing up the dyke. I went up with my father and um we were drawn against carrying down the first round and we felt this is one we should win anyway, like, you know. And uh, Blackrock led at half time by three goals and a point to nil. And with with six minutes to go, Blackrock lead by four goals and a point. And carrying down turned around and got three goals within three minutes. And then the extra time they got a goal and two points to beat us. And I think that was the most depressing time you'll ever get. Well, it was a great game. Uh, Mick Cashman, who was a complete artist, right? he had one of the best games of his life that day. And Martin Thompson, who I often felt was was one of the best players we ever had in the wing, wing back, like, you know. And, and that Ring was playing in side corner forward that day on Declan Connell. He'd be a son of Mally Connell. And Declan did very well on him. You had Seamus Herndon then of Wexford Centre Field. He was a mighty player. And you had Bennett. And then a player who I think gave great service to Blackrock, John Bennett. You know, he was there all those years and before it. And of course, Jim Brown was the prince of fullbacks at the time, like, you know. 56 team. Not because I was probably involved a bit, but um, it gave a great heart to the whole of the parish. A lot of the young fellows that followed them in '56 came up, and you could see the club beginning to rise. If I ventured in the slipstream between the viaducts of your dream. Where a mobile steel rims crack And the dead in the back roads So then, 1961, as luck would have it, the Glen Rovers, who were our, our main rivals during those days, they were beaten by Avenue early on in the championship. So that opened up the championship completely. Everybody felt they had a chance after that, once the Glen were gone. And, of course, as it so happened, we, uh, we, we won it. We beat Avondoo that year in the county final. Yeah, the county final that year, of course, was played as usual in, 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 the, in what is now Parky Keeve. At that time, it was a Cork Athletic Grounds. Huge crowds, as usual. At, in those days, like, there was nothing unusual to have your 20,000 at the county final. And the atmosphere within the parish here itself it was, was fantastic and, uh, you know, everybody was, uh, flags flying all over the place and even though we didn't have a whole lot of facilities here at that time, this area itself was well decorated and everybody was uh, gung-ho for the county fire. The celebrations, as, as I remember them, we went, to the, we went to the village and needless to say we had the cup, the cup was filled <laughs> I know how many times, but uh, we, we were, they, were, they were overflow, of course, most of the pubs were, were just packed out and people were out in the street and there was a fantastic atmosphere there because, uh, you know, it, it, was, it was a great achievement and we, we, were, we were all thrilled. surge through the underage in the 60s brought about the advent of the great team of the 70s and a lot of that again was down to the likes of Derry Kremen 
uh, you know, when we were on the road coming home and uh, getting us involved in the club, I always remember him saying to me, Murph, will you be there on Saturday? Of course, Derry, and sure, our love of the club grew. grew. Heroes, just for one day, and it's more experienced players on the team like Ray Cummins, John O'Halloran, who certainly was an inspirational man, who I would certainly stand out for me on the team in 73. John O'Halloran was an inspirational player and a great man to say a few words um, you know, before or half time. And he, cert he certainly was a great, one of the great leaders on that team. Well. And we were brought out to the showgrounds at half time through Top Gate into a barn and there we got a speech of John O'Halloran and it would make the hair stand on the back of your neck and we came up like we came out in the second half like men inspired against a great Glen team and the Glen were always a great club and we managed to just get home by two points in the end it was my first time experiencing playing in a county final and it was a sensational feeling to win the county championship. My, 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 my standout memory would be of the um, 173. We went down and we won the Munster Club and we went to the All Ireland Club final and um, we drew with Rat Lore in Croke Park. Um, Paddy Mylan saved the day for us. That's a memory I have. He got the equalising score. We went down to Dungarvan and we were. I think five or six points behind with nine minutes to go and we, we, we pulled, we, as the fellas said, we, um, we pulled it out of the fire. Great victory, that was a tremendous victory altogether. Danny Buckley, I remember, came on as a sub that then certainly brought a bit, a bit of life into the forward line. We were certainly struggling badly the same day. We, we, we finished up scoring, I think. We were, we, were, we, were, we were being beaten by, I think, six points behind it. With, um, with, with nine minutes to go and we finished up scoring I think 3-2 in the last nine minutes and you know, pulled the game out of the fire and it was a tremendous win for the club. All. Fierce celebrations that night here in Black Rock I can remember uh, after that victory because it was certainly against all the odds that day. Club, you have fantastic guys in the backroom staff, um, und underage with us going up like uh, you know characters who makes every club would be the likes of the the Tom Clancy and the Ned Kidneys, uh, they, they'll always be around and uh, Nolly Flaherty would always be there and f was a fantastic man to do the hurlies and he you know if you had one two or three or four hurlies they'd all be the exact same weight and and you know there was no change if you broke a hurley go going onto your second one or third one so. Um, Frank Murphy and Yaman would have been selectors in, in the underage with us going up as well. So, um, you know, we had the Cannon came in and who was a fantastic motivator, um, great character around the place. And we also had Joe McGrath around that time. I think Massey Duggan did a, a stunt. Um, Florio Manny did, a, did another year. So, all in all, um, a lot of it was left down to the players really. Um, and we had some fantastic players. and into county players who would come back and give their all and bring encourage the young fellas on. So that's my memory of early days in Black Rock hurling. So um, from winning the failure in 71, um, we were very successful underage, uh, winning the minor county double really for Michaels as well in Black Rock in 74. So we came on to the, um, the senior team, Dermot McCurtain and myself, around the 73-74 uh, era. Uh, our first year we kind of lost to the Bars in the Dyke um, after winning a semi-final in the Park Equive, which was the last match in the Park before they, 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 they re redone it. Um, so we started off losing to the Bars, but the following year we came back in 74 um, and uh, won, sorry, 75 and beat the Glen in the Dyke. Our next, our next championship victory was uh, in 1978. Again, uh, I'd have to mention that Blackrock were captained by the absolute mercurial Blondie John Horgan. He was absolutely inspirational on and off the field. 
plus the fact that like Blackrock at this stage like were were like an intercounty team. And without going through every player really, like you you'd have to think about like Ray Cummins at full forward and maybe Frank Cummins. Like and then you had the likes of uh, Pat Moyle and Eamon O'Donoghue and then you had the likes of Dermot McCurtain and Tom Cashman. So Blackrock were actually getting stronger and stronger all the time. And I had the absolute honour of captaining Blackrock in the 1979 County Championship against the Bars, in which Rockies came out on top by the score of 214 to 26. 85, um, my memories of 80, the 85 final against Milton, we went into the game as underdogs. That was one, certainly, we went in as, we went in as um, Milton were odds and favourites to win it. Um, well, and, and certainly, um, if you were if you were present at this two, at, at, um, if you saw the two semi-finals, Middleton won. Middleton, Middleton went through very. <coughs> they, they certainly paid tremendous hurling on the way to the final. And the day we beat Milford in the semi-final, which we were lucky to get over, we won. I think it was three eight to fourteen points blown for my. Milton played Ballyhay before us in the league final, and they absolutely annihilated Ballyhay, and everybody said. All the papers the fall were full of the build up to the final was in. You know that Rocky said little or no chance, but a uh, tremendous team effort and great captain in Andy Cray, I thought, in fairness, he led the team very well. Um, and you know, he was a, tr he was a tremendous presence too with Frank Cummins at them, a very experienced player, but like, you know, to my memory that was Andy Andy led led it and you had the cannon to be fair, you know, the cannon O'Brien certainly was it certainly brought well, his own, his own, his own, his own bit of magic to the, to, 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 to the, to the team, and uh, you know, certainly he was, he was, a, he was a good character and a good presence around the place, and certainly he was, um, certainly drove us on that year. Now. So. Cannon, um, it was during '98 as well, and it was I was captain in '98, and oh yeah, the Cannon was definitely someone who was um, special in one sense, but completely out there. I used to be sitting at home at, you know, half ten in in the evening time or at night, and you'd be saying another half an hour be going to bed, and the phone would ring outside. We had still had a landline at home, and the Cannon would be on there, and he'd be talking, hurling, and what about this? What about that? And it'd be quarter past twenty past um, eleven. And um, all of a sudden, the cannon would say, what are you still doing up? Get up to bed, will you? And he'd hang up on you. Like some of the stuff there was gas, was gas with the cannon. But, you know, he had, he had, um, he had that aura, aura about him that was, um, was, was unreal. Um, and that he got through to people in a, in a very different way. But, um, yeah, the setup was, was the cannon ultimately, because what the cannon said went, he was a very... Um, um, I suppose strong character in the sense um, of what he done and the people around him then um, I suppose supported him in that. So the 99 county final I suppose um, as I say we were beaten the previous year so there was a little bit of extra I suppose willingness from the team side to be successful this year. We had UCC in the final who really were a team and they always were of I suppose nearly into county players, be it, you know, underage or, or starting to get onto the senior setup with their with their respective counties. Um, you know, talent wise, they were very, very good, but I suppose they didn't have that club spirit which we thought we had over them. And um, also we had um, a very good team in, in, in those years. So you know we had a, we were expecting a very close game but we won it um, we won it well in the end. Um, Shawnee Coakley, five points from play. Um, unbelievable performances. Well, there's confidence now in that UCC backline, so much so they can afford to come forward. And here they come again as Fergal Ryan showing a clean pair of heels to James Murray and to Richie Flannery. And when he needs support, he's got it in Sean Coakley. Well, is it another? It is. Unbelievable. Well, Cannon O'Brien and his fellow selectors. But that, that was a, an unbelievable um, county final because we had waited a long time to get there. I mean, I've been a, I was on that set up for, since 1989 and, um, you know, 98 was the first county final, 99 was the first win. 
Um, so it meant a lot to the club and to this group and ultimately galvanised us to um, get another couple of counties under the belt in 2001 and 2. So here we go, the moment the whole of Black Rock has waited 15 years for. Noel Keane has got his hands in the Sean O'Murphy Cup. Black Rock, the 1999 TSB Senior Hurling Champions, the last champions of the millennium. And what a day they've had. And I'm sure the celebrations will go on for quite a while. In 2001, I missed the first match um, in the first round. And we, we actually had a we, we had a lot of tough games in the earlier rounds. And um, the first match I played was against Avondhu, and I remember we were five or six points down. Jonathan O'Callaghan was causing havoc over the course of that game, and um, I remember one of the the things about the 01 and 02 team was was very much player driven team. If there was a decision that needs to be made, it happened on the pitch. And that game is a prime example of that against Avendu. Jonathan O'Callaghan, I think, had scored five points. And I remember Sherlock came over and said, I'll sort this. And Fergal, I think, came in uh, soon afterwards as well, and a high ball dropped in under the square. And Jonathan O'Callaghan didn't get much of a puck of the ball after that. That ball went into the square on top of him because he, it, it took him for about five or six minutes to get up off the ground. Yeah, the county final really, I suppose, what you could say about the 2001 final, it's the Alan Brown final, really. Um, remember, Alan got 3-8 out of 4-8 in the same day. It was a really mucky, horrible day. And for myself and Paul Tierney, it was our first county final. And I suppose having grown up together and played hurling together, it was a great kind of day for us playing in a senior county final. I remember earlier on in the game, Throwing for anyone who remembers Tierney playing, he was fairly wild. Like, but I remember in the, in, even from the, tr the throwing, he was marking Derek Barrett. And Derek Barrett hit him an awful slap in the sla in the in the throwing. Fro so it was kind of on, game on from the very start. And anyone that knows Tierney as well is the last thing you do to Tierney is give him a slap early on because it just winds him up even more. And, and the same day, he absolutely destroyed Derek Barrett, which was uh, great for us. Um, and like I suppose Alan Brown. He got four or three goals and eight points. Um, the three goals he got, one of them was a typical Alan Brown one, where it was like a rugby one, where he barely he kind of ran it over the over the over the line. But he got one ball there, and he was unmarkable the same day, really. Like he he got he caught a ball over Sean Barrett, who was the Carrick Tool and Imokili fullback, and he went straight through. I was all on my own in front of the goal, screaming in front of it, and I thought he was going to pass it for me because it was just an easy tap in. But he absolutely buried one to the top corner, and I, I'll, I'll never forget that going in. It was just such a, I suppose display of individual brilliance for, from him and it's not many people will say that about Alan Brown either so, so it definitely was um, but uh, he got some great scores on the day and he was literally unmarkable everywhere he went there was in the end I think they, they were just fellas trying to break Hurley's off him and, which is impossible to do with a fella that's able to catch a ball the way he does Alan Brown on the field, trying to steal it, there was Brian O'Keefe, there's a bit of space now for Alan Brown, Alan Brown has got the ball with Brian O'Keefe going inside, oh, oh Brown got the goal, oh what a goal, Nobody Alan Brown the goal, King Nobody has done it again. I feel it in the air, the summer's out of reach, empty lake, empty streets, the sun goes down, I'm driving by your car, oh I know you're not going, I can see. 
after losing in 98, winning in 99, um, we lost in 2000. Then we won again in 2001 and 2. Um, we still had a strong team going into 2003, but I suppose it was an era when um, Newtown Shandrum started um, and they became very dominant for a couple of years. Um, and then the teams, you know, people started to, uh, I suppose, fall off effectively. You know, players started to retire, you know. And um, yeah, we, after so many successful years and being very competitive, we started to get less competitive and less competitive. No, I don't understand what happened to our love. But babe, I'm gonna get you back. I'm gonna show you what I'm made of. I can see you, your brown skin shining in the sun. I see you looking real slow and smiling at everyone. Building up to it, again, I, th I think Glen were probably definitely the favourites on the day. Um, people possibly thought that, you know, the semi-final was Black Rock to beat. The most memorable game of the year was uh, the semi-final against UCC. Then I went out playing against the full inter-county team. And we kind of just went for it, like, from the start. Big things just worked out for us that day. And you know, we, we got over the line. I remember fellas just collapsing at the final whistle, you know, we had just given so much. The lead up to the county final was unbelievable as well, like the, uh, the flags, the bunting and everything. And just training was, there was such a good buzz around the parish and stuff, like it was just, it's kind of all match like it. I remember we were under massive pressure at the start, um, and we definitely went a few points down. I remember Niall Cash coming out with a ball and putting it over from like 70 or 80 yards. And I just remember everyone, I think, just took a deep breath and it settled everyone. And I think we, we started hurling after that. That game went to extra time as well. And uh, I can just remember Robbie coming on and getting two goals, uh, hitting the roof of the net. The yeah, I don't know if I'm allowed to speak about the celebrations, but we had a, we had a few quiet ones, I'd say, the night after that night. Yeah, like, I, I mean, I have, I have obviously very strong memories. I remember getting out by the car up by Menlo and obviously um, coming around the corner by Stad Oil and you know, uh, the crowd of us walking up Church Road. And like, you know, looking back, I wouldn't change it for the world. You know, like it was, you know, it's one of, one of the great memories I have of us all walking down Church Road, you know, with the cup and coming into the pitch and jerk hauling up on the roof, you know, and um, you know, it was just absolutely unbelievable and um, like I'll never forget it. Obviously we win it for ourselves, like, but you win it for your family as well. And seeing everyone just so happy and having a great night, uh, they're the nights you're going to live for. Come to the club on Saturday mornings when you're younger, like kind of dreaming, dreaming big of, of winning a county final and stuff, and um, and then going doing it is like it's a dream come true. But obviously, not just happy about one, like a lot way more. We came together as a team, as a panel, as a whole club, and as a whole community. And when we did that, we were able to achieve great things. We are very fortunate in this club that we seem to have such a great bunch of players, young boys, talented boys. I think we have, you know, we have a fantastic group of players and hopefully the day is not too far away when we'll be bringing the cup back to the village again. Just remember that your careers are short, you know, and you have a, lot, you have a long life ahead of you, hopefully for everybody after you finish your playing there. So give it, give it, give it your all and give it, give it of your best when you're, when you're there for the Rockies. And, you know, you might have to make a few sacrifices at times, but, you know, certainly when you think back on it later on in life, you would say, well, it was worth this. We have a fantastic club, great people behind them. They have all the facilities, the management structure is there. So um, just hang in there, play till the final whistle, and just say, have faith in your, in your club. I've, I suppose I've put a lot of time, but 
I don't feel like I put in a lot of time. It just just happens naturally with me, I suppose. That's the way I feel. Um, there's a lot of emotion um, attached to this club for me personally, and I I think I'll always I'll always feel that way about this club. I know that uh, 25 years that we had to wait for it. It was probably worth it from the point of view that uh, to see the, the joy in people's faces alone. Like. We're, we're in the mix, like obviously the, the bar is very high in Black Rock, you know, if, if you're not winning the county often, you know, the year may not be seen as a success, but I think we are quite close. We just have to keep in mind that we're, we all want the same thing, we all want Black Rock to be successful. When you go out in the heat of championship battle, you're together, you're strong, you're Rockies, you're ambitious, and you want to win another championship and you want to take this club back into the Munster Championship and the All-Ireland Series. And that would make all us emerging elder Rockies very happy indeed. Just forget the world